Let's give it up for our next keynote speaker. Welcome. My job here now is to keep the same energy that we had in the dance before. Challenging, I know, but I will do my best. We are going to talk about the role of UX in transforming broken systems. And you might be sitting there thinking, is, how is this relevant for me? There's no AI in the title. And what are even broken systems? But I promise you, regardless of you being a young designer starting your career, or a seasoned professional, I hope to inspire you to see broken systems as opportunities, but also provide you with concrete tools to leverage in your work today. This is when I should start dancing for you. <laughs> Working on my dance moves. Definitely not as talented as the crew before, but I do like to dance, so now I'm very, very inspired. Let's see what happens. Just went back in time, zoop, and we're here again. Who knew that conference speaking could be a matter of life and death? But now we know. All right, can we get the slides up? Welcome again. We will do a short little poll just to check the status of the room. So during the break, hands up, did you have a cup of tea? All right, hands down. Did you have a cup of coffee? Perfect. Have you ever heard about Trust Trace? Thank you, team. Team is over there. I hope that one day I will have the same response as Kate did. Do you have any sense of what I'm going to talk about when I say broken systems? Hands up. Nice. Low expectations. I can deliver. All right. I'm a visual person. This is how it's going to go. We are going to talk about what broken systems are. We are going to talk about challenges in them. And I will exemplify this with the work that we do at Trust Trace. I will then give you some concrete tools and tips to use in your work, especially if you work in complexity. And at the end of it, we will nicely wrap it up with some takeaways. I'm also a service designer. This is how it might feel. Broken systems can feel overwhelming, but I'm also here to tell you there's hope. So a little bit about myself. Why am I here talking to you about this today? I'm born in Iceland, born and raised, and Iceland is a very small island in the North Atlantic Ocean. Population about 320,000. We don't even reach half a million. So obviously, as a young uh, teenager and young person, I left and went abroad to study. I studied graphic design in Italy, very fashionable. And today, I live and work in Sweden. And I've worked as a designer for about 12 years. And I've had various roles. And this is a little bit of the story of how I studied graphic design, but ended up being the UX director at Trust Trace, working in broken systems. So as a designer, I worked as a UI, UX designer, when we love to club those two titles together. I was actually doing UI design. They didn't know what UX was. Then I spent about six years as a service designer, working for Accenture's design agency, Fjord. And after that, I went to work at scale-ups and startups as a product designer and a design leader. But that's not where the story of broken systems starts. It starts with this project. During my service design uh, time at Accenture, I was introduced to Save the Children. And together with them, I built and launched a service that allowed them to assess the impact of social work they were doing in disadvantaged areas. And during this project, which spanned about two years, I was meeting teenagers, young people, living in those areas that didn't feel much hope for the world. 
They were being discriminated against because of their last names. There was high crime in those areas. And I realized, talking with them and shaping these services, that if I could do a really good job here, I could have significant impact on their future. And that spoke to me in a way that just designing a usable service didn't. So I found meaning in that. And that led me to Health Integrator, where I joined a startup, a very early startup, and I worked in preventive healthcare. And it turns out it is much cheaper to prevent disease than it is to cure it later on, when possible, of course. So at Health Integrator, we were designing and launching a digital service, and I was interviewing and talking with people who were taking part in our pilot program. And these were people in their 50s and 60s who had sort of maybe not had the best lifestyle, and we were helping them sort of revert from the risk of developing disease. And these people were telling me, Bega, I have more energy than I've had in 10 years. I can play with my grandkids, and I see that I can have a fulfilling life for many more years to come. So obviously that struck a chord with me. And that brings me to where I am today, which is TrustTrace. And TrustTrace's mission is making global supply chains traceable, circular, and fair. So in my previous projects, I'd definitely be working in broken systems, and I thought I'd worked in some complexity. This is the new type of complexity for me. But I'm very passionate about the environment, sustainability, and I want to try to have impact on the current fashion industry. So that's where I am today, and I will exemplify some of this through the work we do with my design team. But before we dive into Trust Trace, I want to align us in this room here on what are systems and what are broken systems. So system is a complex network with many actors. We probably interact with multiple systems during our day. It might be transportation, it might be banking, it might be healthcare, it might be education. These are the fabrics of our lives. And because they're often vast and complex, they also have environmental and social impact involved. And they also have economic dependencies. There's usually someone in the system who benefits from it and someone who does not benefit from it. And something that's curious about systems as well is they're kind of this organic being that tries to maintain its status quo. The system doesn't want to change itself. So we inject innovation and regulation to try to affect it. Let's look at a system example. So healthcare. We've already mentioned a little bit about healthcare earlier this morning. So in terms of a system, we have patients, we have healthcare providers, we have payers and regulators. This is quite complex. So what is broken inside of healthcare? I think many of us can agree that we can imagine access to healthcare being a problem. It can be that you live too far away from help when you need it. It can be that when you enter the hospital, the lines are too long or you can't afford it. Or, like in this example here, it can be that access to medicine is not available to you. So what they're protesting against here is diabetes medicine became trendy to lose weight. So people who wanted to go down in weight started buying it up in bulk and removing access from those who actually needed it to survive. So if we talk about another system, the global su supply chain, and this is much closer to what we do at Trust Trace. So here we have suppliers, those who make something, products. We have retailers, those who sell something. We have consumers, those who buy something, uh, and often dictate the demand. And we have regulators. And in the case of a global supply chain, you can have regulators in one part of the world who influence how something is made or sold in another part of the world. An example of this could be that if you import something into the US, you have to follow certain rules that the US sets. So then we have another layer of complexity. We have global as a part of it. So what can be broken in the supply chain? 
Obviously, I think we're all in this room aware of environmental and ethical issues. That can be deforestation, the removing of forest to grow something and sell it. It can be pollution. It can be ethical issues, forced labor, etc. So plenty of problems to fix here. And that leads me to Trust Trace. At Trust Trace, our mission is to make global supply chains traceable, circular, and fair. And briefly about us, we're founded by, in 2016 by four founders wanting to find a solution to the polluting effects of the textile production. We're an Indian Sweden company. We also have uh, offices in the US and Europe. But our core is Stockholm, where I'm based, and Kwan Baitor and Sianai here. And as an example, one of our founders, Sarva, comes from Kwan Baitor, and he could directly see the polluting effects of the textile industry there on the rivers and in the land and wanted to solve that. So we're 160 plus employees. We have 30 customers. Um, and I know we've mentioned B2B enterprise. We are B2B enterprise. Yes, that's not always sexy, but it is very important work as well. And it's another type of creativity sometimes. We have over 50,000 plus suppliers on our platform. And these are some of the customers we help trace their supply chains for. So our customers are both leading footwear companies, textile companies, uh, fast fashion, luxury, it doesn't really matter. Fundamentally, they all need to do the same thing. They need to understand their supply chains. And what might that look like? Now we step back to service design and the design mindset. So this is the relationship between a customer and a brand. I think we're all quite familiar with this. We walk into a store and we buy an item of clothing from a brand. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. It is simple. It is easy to design for. But this brand produces over 100 products. And for each product, they have a supplier. And that supplier has suppliers. And so it grows. And there comes the complexity. This is what we are trying to bring light on. This is what we're trying to collect information and data from. Many of these suppliers are not users of our product. They did not sign up for a subscription. That is what the brand did. And they are, in some cases, being asked to use our product to provide information. And these are some of the things that affect our work. I've already mentioned regulations. This has been a fairly unregulated industry. And the amount of regulations is growing. They are trying to control and shape this system. And with that comes a lot of ambiguity, especially for designers. Have you tried to read a regulation and then design a product based on it? It is quite complicated. The other thing is business maturity. That is business maturity of our customers, so our brand customers, but also their suppliers. Some suppliers have high maturity. They are very technically advanced. They have the data ready to share. Some suppliers are farmers. They have land. They focus on farming. They are not technically advanced, and they are not prepared. And if we shift the focus from the consumer mindset, which is very easy to imagine, to a supplier further down the supply chain, this is something that we kind of hear them say. I am unsure of what's expected of me, and I don't have the tools and resources to provide the requested data. And this is where UX becomes fundamental. As designers of these products, if we don't understand this, if we don't understand that we are dependent on actors who are not logging into our product, who might not understand how they need to be part of the system, our solutions will not be successful. And that might be overwhelming sometimes. But the beauty with design is that we have tools to break down complexity. And you have to start somewhere. So with that, I will share with you three tools when designing for complexity. And I just want to say that these are examples that we use in our work. We also follow the design process. We have user research. We have analytics, all those things which are given today. 
The first one is the sexy frameworks. Frameworks allow us to make sense of information and visualize it. This is an example. The content is not very relevant to you, but I want to give this as an example. So by leveraging either existing frameworks, I think we saw an example with the previous speaker as well, or creating your own, allows you and your team and your organization to understand the information in a clear way. It allows us to have something that we can go back to and look at, and it anchors us in complexity, because it's very, very easy to get lost. So I highly, highly encourage all designers to think of tools and ways that you can take information you hear in complexity and try to shape it in a visual way to align with your peers. Second example, value models. There's a lot of value models out there. You have the value proposition canvas, so there's plenty of you to Google and find what suits you best. We use this. I think it suits us quite well. It's a simple example. I will show it to you. And what it enables us to do is enables us to look at the business drivers and the objectives of our customers and what are the benefits that they're trying to achieve. And this is the goal that they want to have. And it allows us to map what are the business change or action that needs to happen to make this benefit come true. And in the how section, we look at our own product and our own solution, and we're able to map that to that action that needs to happen. And sometimes that's an existing functionality that needs some enhancements, and sometimes that is an opportunity. Having value models and having that clear for what we're doing, again, helps us align as a company and an organization on what is the important thing here. But it also helps us anchor that back into our decision making. So the third example, and I know I'm in the unsexy business now, of frameworks and value models and flows. But flows is actually where a lot of our, my designers spend a lot of time. And that is, again, back to complexity. So flows allow us to quickly distill the experience. And I know that we think of designers often as delivering that shiny object at the end, but this is where the experience starts to get shaped. So I'll give you an example. We again have multiple actors. So this is one actor, the next actor, and the third actor. And then we tie it back to what is the ultimate goal here. And this is a little bit of a mix of a systems flow and a user flow. We combine it with the data that we see we need to collect and how that's going to flow through. But what this allows us to do is also to identify complexity. So if you look at the middle part, the sort of blue gray box there, you can see there's a lot happening. And we can make the assumption that here's a lot of complexity and the experience itself will be complex. So we spend some time here, we iterate a lot, and it goes very fast. Then we can pinpoint this complexity and say, hey, let's do a design sprint on this, or let's do quick concepts to flush out this here and see if it actually works. So we will take that and we will make some very quick rough sketches. This focuses on the high level information and the action that we're expecting the user to do. Again, we iterate quickly, which leads us to the next fidelity level. Here we can go to wireframes, we can add more details to it, we can hash out all those little edge cases and the information that needs to be shown. And finally, when we get to the, the beautiful final design of it, that is more us applying our design system and just wrapping up those. 80% of our work has been spent in the flows, in the concepts, in the wireframes. And the final result looks simple, as simple as a supply chain mapping tool can be, but it is the result of the work that we've done before, but also three core skills that I think every designer has to master, and that is collaboration, facilitation, and prioritization. 
In terms of collaboration, we collaborate with more than just the product trio. So it's more than PM and tech engineer. We are collaborating with legal experts inside our company who are up to date on all the coming regulations. And we collaborate tightly with our customer success team. Again, we are a B2B enterprise. So our customer success team is very close to our customers and know them very well. We, of course, also collaborate with our customers and often co-design with them. When it comes to collaboration, you have to have facilitation. So as a designer, to be able to facilitate discovery workshops, uh, be able to facilitate design critiques or reviews or walkthrough is a key skill to have. And the last thing is, when you've collaborated with many and you've had lots of workshops, you have a lot of input and that needs to be prioritized. So to be able to effectively prioritize the input that you've gotten, tying it back to, for example, the value model, allows you to identify what is it that I need to do now and what can I keep for later for future ideas. That leaves us with the key takeaways. So the most important thing I want you to remember when designing for complexity or broken systems it is that you need to start somewhere. That can be the user flow, tying one dot to the other. And how you move forward is by asking questions. Never stop asking questions. Why, what, how, where, where is this happening? And if people don't have the answer, don't expect, uh, accept that as a no. Go out there and look for where you can find those answers. And the more you learn, the more you build of your understanding and you won't get it right the first time, and not the second time either. And as soon as you accept that and you stop striving for perfection and you strive for iteration, you will have so much better work and you will get there so faster, so much faster. And sometimes this can be painful. It can be painful to expose your work and have a lot of input on it and feel like you're taking two steps forward, three steps backward, etc. But it is part of the process. So get input, test your assumptions, and iterate. And this is the reason I wanted to bring this talk here to UX India. Because through my journey, I have realized that when you have broken systems, you have technology, emerging technology, advances in technology, and you have regulation, you have a fantastic place for innovation. And designers, we need to be part of it. We've talked about innovation this morning and inter entrepreneurship. If we don't have a design mindset when we set out to solve these problems, if we can't understand the complexity and understand the actors in the system and design for that, we will not succeed. So this is my call to you as the design community to see this as an opportunity to come and be part of designing solutions for these broken systems. And with that, I thank you. Please connect with me or my team here. And if you're interested, we are definitely growing our company, Trust Trace. Thank you so much.